Hello, my friends, how are you doing? So here is one of the strangest news in AI ever. Emad is going into crypto. I wouldn't have believed that if he wouldn't have announced it himself on his Twitter account. He's calling it shelling AI. And what he wants to do, as you know, he has left Stability AI, is to decentralize the control over AI, but also the training of AI models. And of course, if you think about it, there's a lot of overlap between the massive computing power that is needed to train AI and the massive computing power that is needed to mine crypto. But at the other hand, there is a lot of bad rap already about AI. So do you really want to associate that with the crypto space that is known for scandals, for scams, for nepotism? It doesn't really have the best rap. So I don't really feel like this is a space that AI directly wants to be associated with. It really has a bad taste. Let me know what you think about that. The next big news, of course, is Kling AI for video. This is a huge competitor for Sora. And here you can see side by side comparisons that have been shared by Angry Tom on Twitter. Now, these video results look really amazing. And you could say that Kling is on par with Sora, which is really cool because this adds more competition to the AI landscape, brings us more innovation faster. Another interesting aspect here is that Kling is a company that is China based. And as you might know, a lot of very innovative and interesting AI projects are coming out of China. So there's a lot of development going on there. Now, one question I want to ask here is, of course, how much control do we have over these videos that are created? Is it just text to video? Do we have video to video input? Do we have things like control net or even more advanced techniques to influence the actual video that is created. And of course, the other question here is how much are these videos cherry picked? Because if you remember the amazing music video that has been created with Sora, it was really beautiful. But you could also see that none of these scenes have been free of errors in the AI video creation. So it is really up to the test when this is going to be released to see how good is the video creation actually going to be. And of course, will this ever run on a local computer? Because especially with Sora, we know that this needs so much computing power and such a large amount of VRAM that is probably not being able to run locally. Next, let's talk about PUT. This is a new way to train upscale models, which gives you super high resolution that is also very, very detailed. So here you can see an example of a classic painting that has been upscaled to a 16K resolution with absolutely stunning details in the upscale. Now, the technology that is used here to achieve these results is course to fine training. When we look at the GitHub website of that project, you can see that they envision different uses. So not just upscaling of images, but also for image synthesis. And the process on how this is working can be seen down here, where they train the model in different iterations, where they go from a low resolution, low detail image to higher resolutions, higher detailed versions of the same image to train the model, show the model how this image will look in different resolutions with different amounts of data lost. And they also train this with a lot of missing input data, which often, of course, happens if you have a low resolution impact image so that the model knows how to replace these missing parts of information to still create a very high resolution image by making up these details. As you can see here with the comparisons to different other techniques, this can create really stunning details, very, very fine details and understand the different elements and textures that are needed to create the details in a realistic way. Here you can also see the comparison between a very compressed, very fragmented image and then their upscaling method, which really cleans up that photo 
brings back a lot of very nice details, even recreates colors in that image to make it look a lot better and a lot more natural. So this is really a very amazing development in the upscaling area. Another thing that they point out or hint at with their paper is, if I understand it correctly, the compression of data, which would also be very interesting to be able to compress high resolution images into a very small format while at the same time retaining most of the data and being able to recreate a very high resolution image from a very small compressed file. Now let's talk about Toon Crafter. This AI technology has huge potential for the anime industry because what it does is interpolation, as we would call it. But if you know about anime creation, there are two different parts, actually more, but these parts are Genga and Doga. Now, Genga are the keyframes, the major poses that are created by very skilled artists to set up the scene. But of course, you need the in-between steps to actually create motion. And they are called Doga and often are a low paid job and very, very work intense. Now, this AI promises to be able to create that. And when you look at the examples that are presented here, you can see some really interesting and amazing results that have a good understanding of what is happening in the scene and how to actually animate it to not just make it smooth motion, but also believable. Of course, you could say that this lacks the artistic background and the expressiveness of a handmade anime movie. But for the very competitive AI market that is aimed to create cheaper animes faster, mostly for TV production, this is really a good solution because there often it is less about quality and more about putting out more series in a faster time. And of course, another thing, if you look for a lot of cheaply created anime out there, you will see that a lot of the image is actually static and just a little bit inside of the image is moving because movement is expensive to create it. So with this technology, we could actually see animes that are created cheaper, but have a lot more movement and animation in there, making them a much better and more cineastic experience for the anime fan. Next, let's have a look at the website UDO for AI music creation. And they have actually created a really cool feature that you can see here for the tweet from Mika Berkeley. So what they do is you can upload a music that you have created, you have composed, and then UDO is going to extend that with AI. Now, the process is not perfect, and I don't want to play the example here for copyright reasons, but this gives you a lot more control over what kind of specific music you want to create. And of course, as a music producer, you can fix the things that the AI got wrong. So you get more material, can produce more music in an easier way and also probably be a lot more playful because now you can create a couple of bars and then extend it to a longer version and remix that longer version into an actual song saving time, being faster in iteration, helping you with the creative process. But at the same time, you stick to the music, to the artistic vision that you want to actually create rather than leaving it up to the AI to be completely random in its creation. This is the kind of AI I love to see. Next, I want to show you something really amazing created by Canva Stick 3D and Illumetry. Now, this is not specifically AI because what it does is to project a live video onto a 3D model, but it has huge potential for AI. Now, what they show here in the video is that you can design on a canvas with your hands and then see directly how this would look on the project, on that product you want to create. But you can also imagine using the same process, for example, with LCM, 
painting, creating these signs with AI, specifically how you want to do it with, for example, Krita and seeing directly on the product, on the design you want to create, how that would actually look. So this is really stunning for the creative process and is actually involved in how you would design something specifically for the product, for the look, for the feel, for its expressiveness. That's it for today. Let me know in the comments what you think about these mind-blowing innovations that are going on. This is really crazy and I can't imagine where AI is going to be half a year from now. Thank you very much. Subscribe if you want to see more news like this and see you soon. Bye.